Hello and welcome back to another very exciting tutorial on why an airplane flies, specifically covering the three laws of motion developed by Isaac Newton. Did you know that Isaac Newton originally tried being a farmer, but it turned out he was a terrible farmer and his uncle ended up pulling him out of the agricultural lifestyle and got him to attend college. But of course, the topic we are covering is how do Newton's three laws of motion factor into flight of an airplane? Let's take a look. Okay, let's start with the air. You have the air in the atmosphere. The air's behavior is explained by Newton's first law of motion, which states, a body at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. So basically, according to Newton's first law, the air's just gonna hang out and do its thing. Next, we have Newton's second law. It says a force applied on a body will alter its movement. So in this case, we have the wing, specifically referencing the airfoil. Now, side note, an airfoil is just a cross-section shape of a wing. So take a wing, cut it, the cut outline is the airfoil. So the airfoil moving through the air changes the air's velocity and direction in accordance with Newton's second law. And finally, Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The air is deflected downward into downwash because the wing pushes the air downward. The equal and opposite reaction is the air pushing the wing upward, which is the force known as lift. And yes, lift is what holds the airplane in the air. However, why is there downwash? As in, why is the air traveling over the airfoil get deflected downward? Well, I'm glad you asked. Due to Bernoulli's principle, we have a high pressure on the bottom of the wings and a low pressure on the top of the wings. The air spills over at the ends of the wings because the air wants to go from high pressure to low pressure, creating wingtip vortices. Now, as you can see, a component of a wingtip vortex is airflow from above the airfoil downward, which is what ends up pushing the air flowing over the airfoil downward, turning it into downwash. So yeah, the wingtip vortices are what induce the downwash. And it's actually been measured with a wing in a wind tunnel that spans the entire width of the tunnel, not permitting any development of wingtip vortices. So with no wingtip vortices, there ends up being no downwash either, which is a pretty cool observation. But anyway, to repeat myself, air starts out stationary, Newton's first law. Due to the air being deflected downward into downwash by the wing, Newton's second law, there's an equal and opposite reaction, Newton's third law. This equal and opposite reaction is the upward force on the wing, known as lift, which holds the airplane in the air. And there you have why an airplane flies according to Newton's laws of motion. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and be sure not to miss our next video by subscribing to us on YouTube and liking our Facebook page. And of course, until next time, onwards and upwards, thanks for watching.